I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I am getting ready to leave no dye behind. And we're gonna do this with some leftover dye stocks. But to start, I'm pouring some stocks into some containers, and these are the stocks that we will be using up. Uh, but I'm doing this for another video because I wanna use some syringes to measure out similar amounts of color. Uh, maybe I'll hang on to some of this. And so to do that, it's easier to have it in cups. And then I figured, well, we may as well then leave no dye behind with whatever is left in the cups to create something fun and random. So everything here are 1% dye stocks. And so far I have some fun, some pecan brown. This is some deep purple a color I know strikes on the faster side. Uh, this is some emerald green, a color I know strikes on the slower side. Because for our other project, we definitely want there to be some breaking. Actually, I think that this was the midnight blue. I think that this is our royal purple, and I'm now wondering if I used the wrong color for another project that I'm dealing with today. Whoops, <laughs> if I did. But we'll also have a little bit of some deep magenta. And next time you see me, we will uh, see how much of each of these colors we have left in a non-measured way. But I'm gonna check, okay, the royal purple and the midnight blue, those are different colors. Um, I had grabbed the one, one, wrong one by accident, which means that I might have done that in another video. Uh-oh. All right, we have some remnant colors here. I also have one tiny rogue drop that ended up in this cup, and I have a tiny bit of just some rinse in another cylinder. And I'm gonna start rinsing out each of these containers and combining the dye into my mason jar. This is a super rough estimate. I don't think we have over 100 milliliters of color here total. Maybe we have like, 50 to 100. It could be a little over 100. It's hard to say for sure. Uh, but I'd say we definitely have enough pigment here total to dye 1 to 200 grams of yarn in a variety of different ways. But I am very curious to see what the average color appears to be. The leftover color is very purple leaning, which ultimately should surprise no one. It should not be a surprise to me. It should not be a surprise to you. <laughs> but Let's go make up a dye bath. I almost forgot, I also meant to rinse out the rest of this fawn color. Which you can see that the dregs of one bottle does not give us very much color. But here is that other color we mixed up that has a reasonable amount of dye, more than just dregs. This is my 12 quart kettle. And knowing this dye pot, I would say I have approximately 16 cups of water in here. Let's go ahead and add five tablespoons of white vinegar. And I'm gonna let this heat up a bit. Um, so that way, not so that way we're at like a rolling boil, but so things are hot. And I'm gonna go pick out some yarn that we'll add to here. I'm now gonna come over with 200 grams of dry Stroll fingering weight yarn. Stroll is 75% superwash merino wool, 25% uh, nylon. And I'm not dip dyeing per se, but I'm letting this yarn just slowly sink into the water, um, which is just showing just how absorbent um, this yarn base is. And I'm now gonna help with the end. And so I'm curious, we've got some areas that are more exposed, some that are less exposed, but I'm not planning on stirring things up a lot. Uh, a lot of times I talk about what to do if you want even color coverage. And if you want more even color coverage, you wanna do a lot of things like stirring, uh, starting with pre-soaked yarn, maybe stirring cold with no acid. But if you start with dry yarn um, that is in a hot dye bath with acid, uh, you're gonna see more variation and we see some lighter and deeper patches in here already. And so if I lift this up now, we still have a reasonable amount of color, but 
we also have a lot of variation in our yarn. And the reason why I'm removing it now is just so that way maybe we end up with pastels, but not necessarily white. Um, but a lot of that color has already absorbed. And I'm curious what kind of colors, because in addition to some green notes in the end, I'm seeing some like yellow notes from some of those browns, and I think that it's just interesting. So we're gonna have a really pretty tonal in the end. But now I need to heat this for 30 minutes, uh, and then we'll pop back in. But actually, why not add two tablespoons of white vinegar right now, just while I'm thinking about it, but I'll see you in 30 minutes. Okay, it's been 30 minutes, and I'm ready to remove our yarn from the dye bath. There may be a hint of yellow left. Actually, maybe I see it more in person, but only at certain angles, so maybe not. Now, this color does feel similar to what I've had in the past from mixing emerald green and royal purple, but I think that the greens are a bit more muted. I think everything's a little bit more muted overall, likely because of those other colors we put in, but those blues, <laughs> the midnight blue and royal purple definitely made the biggest difference. But anyway, I'm going to set the yarn aside to cool completely so we can wash it. While we wait for things to cool, it's worth just taking a moment to think about colors and proportions. Because you might think that if we were gonna mix green, purple, blue, pink, and browns, that maybe we would end up with something that felt a lot more muddy overall. And instead we have this purple and light green type of colorway. Now it all comes down to proportion. And some colors, such as I think the midnight blue and royal purple, are way more pigmented than some of those other colors that I had brought out. Don't get me wrong, emerald green is pigmented and fawn and pecan brown likely are pigmented too. But clearly at those proportions I used, the purples and blues overpowered everything. And I don't want you to get me wrong, I love this color. I was sort of hoping we were gonna end up somewhere different just because I feel like this is a combination uh, that I end up with a lot. And I think I was hoping by having all those other colors in there, maybe we would have seen like a shift of something somewhere. But as soon as everything mixed together looked purple, I had my suspicions. So sometimes it's just hard to predict what will happen. But anyway, uh, yeah, I'll see you when it's time to wash. Let's wash our leave no dye behind yarn. And these aluminum pans I do reuse. I just rinse them out. Uh, after removing the yarn, not because I'm concerned about dye left on it, but because uh, eventually acid can start to like pit and dissolve the aluminum of it. So uh, I try to rinse it out before letting it dry. But here to our rinse water, I'm going to add a little bit of some clear dish soap. I'm not anticipating any bleeding. Uh, another thing that I am inclined to do sometimes is to move the zip tie a little bit at the washing stage. That way, if there's any dye that was sort of stuck beneath, it just maybe makes it easier to get out, but also maybe not. Just little things that I do out of habit, but I'm not seeing any color bleeding. Woohoo! So now I need to rinse out the soap, then I can put this yarn through my spin dryer to help remove the liquid so that way things can dry out faster once I go hang it to dry. Uh, and then once I remove the yarn from the spin dryer, as I said, I'll hang it up to dry and we can take a look at our finished yarn. The colors here are beautiful. I definitely was expecting something that looked a little bit less like I just mixed royal purple and emerald green together. But you know what? It's still pretty and things are definitely more, definitely not brown, but maybe a little bit more gray overall because Things are light and medium toned, not necessarily pastel, but things are more muted. The colors aren't as bright as they would have been had I not had all those other colors in the mix as well. And there's also a really, really big chance that my estimate on the total milliliters of dye was way off, uh, but we don't know. I mean, that's the thing with leaving no dye behind. And I could have left less dye behind. I could have poured a lot of these dyes back into their stock solution containers, but 
I wanted to mix them together. And so I'm really glad that I did this. I feel glazing in here. And certainly we know that royal purple is a big glazing kind of color. It'll strike really, really fast to the surface of the yarn. And our dye bath did have a lot of acid in there already. So this is not a surprise. Uh, I don't know if any of the other colors we had in there are also more glaze candidates. I think I was expecting to have a few more hues that I felt within here, but clearly I would say the little bit of green and the purple were overpowering forces. I do feel like that there was a yellow that was left behind it. And you know, maybe Fawn does that, has some yellow left at the end. I don't really remember, but I mean, it goes to show you never know exactly what you're gonna end up with when you're just mixing things together, not knowing the proportions. And if you're lucky, you end up with something beautiful. And if you're not, you can over dye it. But I am happy with these colors. Ooh, ooh, here's a section that almost feels like there's a little bit of pink. <laughs> it's a bit of a reach. It's very subtle. But I feel that tone difference between this and the green. I really wonder what would happen if when I combined everything, well, okay, with the leave no dye behind, it would be hard. But if I took half of each of the leave no dye behind dyes and dyed a mini skein of each of those individually, I'm curious to see what the various colors would have looked like. I don't think that's something I'm actually going to do, but it's fun. It's a fun thought exercise to think about uh, what the colors look like on a mini skein and then thinking about the color on yarn, right? Ultimately, this is a reason why I enjoy doing triad color mixing exercises because that has given me a good feel with some of the primary colors that I have, what I need to do to mix them proportionally to get the kind of hue that I want. It's giving me a better feel for how those mix and what colors I end up with. But with random colors at random amounts, you don't know. And I could have kept mixing, and when I saw the color looked purple, I could have gone and grabbed more of any of the other colors to try to shift it somewhere. But where we ended up is very, very pretty, and so I'm happy with this yarn. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I really hope that you enjoy these Leave No Dye Behind videos. Sometimes I plan to do something like this, like I did today. Other times I really do just have things that are completely left over and I don't know the proportions or even remember what colors went into it. And so, I don't know, it was fun to set this one up slightly differently, even if the result looked like something very familiar. <laughs> oh man, I really, I feel like I've got a lot of like purple and green things that I've dyed lately. And so I was really trying to get something different. Um, but knowing that the purple and green break, I was like, okay, we can lean into that. Uh, but, you know, <laughs> it's funny that I ended up here, but I do, I do really, really love it. So subscribing is the biggest way you can support this content um, and engaging with the videos, leaving comments below. That all helps the channel grow. There are a lot of other ways you can help support the channel. Uh, I have a Patreon. You can join to become a channel member and get fun emotes. And I have an Etsy shop, Chemnitz Creations, which is full of yarn that I've dyed in my videos. Links to everything are down in the video description. Thank you so much for watching.